Are you tired of boring 5th edition dragons? <laughs> because the dragon in Dungeons and Dragons should be epic and scary, not just a sack of hit points with a breath weapon. The land, environment, and creatures should change around this dragon wherever they're located. Its breath weapon should do more than just flat damage, and each different dragon you face should be different than the next. But I'm not just here to complain, I'm here to homebrew with this brand new build a dragon system that I've created that you can create any kind of dragon of any type as epic as you want in just five steps. Bizban's Treasure of Dragons just came out not too long ago and it really got me hyped up about all this dragon stuff. I did a whole review on it. You guys really seemed to like it and you liked it so much that I, one of the complaints I said was that Fizzbands dropped the ball on subclasses. All they did was a ranger and a monk, and there's already a dragon sorcerer, so there's only three class. I wanted a dragon subclass for all of them, so guess what? <laughs> what me and my team did? We went and we did that. This month's issue of the DC Playbook not only has a full build a dragon system in there that I'm going to get into in this video, it also has the 11 missing subclasses from all the classes that don't have a dragon themed subclass. Just picking five random ones here, we have Warlock Pact of the Great Worm. Dragon Rider Fighter, a Path of the Scales Barbarian that's rage gets them more and more draconic as they level up. They slowly start turning into a dragon. And then there's a Dragon Fire Artificer that has a Dragon Fire Cannon that they upgrade as they level up. And a Circle of the Dragon's Lair Druid that can literally shape the land around them into their own lair, filled with lair actions and a bunch of other stuff too. And there's six more where that came from, including dragon themed magic items and dragon themed bonus level up perks to customize your characters with. And there's also a bunch of dragon examples that me and my team built built using this system to make some pretty amazing dragons that I can't wait to run at my game tables and they're really fun to play even just as the dungeon master but I also am implementing the first release of the purple dragon I know this the whole the dungeon coach and all the purple and everything sometimes probably too much purple and you can tell in the background but there's a purple dragon in there that I used this system for so if you want to get your claws on all this for yourself all you gotta do is become a patron during January or February and you get that for free as soon as you join or you can pick it up on the website the links all of that down in the description so enough talk about these dragons let's build us a dragon now starting off with step one the concept this step is really important and really easy to do and it might feel like it's a waste of a step in just thinking about the concept of dragon i just want to make a cool dragon but if you want to make a green dragon what kind of green dragon? You need to ask yourself some more why so you can get the overall flavor and feel of what this is going to be. Because when you start diving into these later steps, you need to be able to branch and change into some stuff. So if you say green dragon, are you going to make it poison? It's like really dial up the poison of this dragon. There's poison. It's poison breath is super noxious. Or is it going to be a more nature type dragon? And the dragon can shape and change the nature and like vines and stuff around it. Or speaking of nature, you can maybe go away from the green dragon and go dive into the nature and maybe have a mist or a fog dragon and its breath actually isn't even damaging at all all it does is create fog everywhere and the entire fight becomes this big fight of fog or maybe instead of fog it's mist and there's a mist that spreads around everywhere and there's some negative effects that affect the players if they're in the mist and positive effects that affect the dragon if they're in the mist and this is all you really need for the concept phase here is just keep diving into i haven't again just now i didn't talk about any mechanics i just talked about the flavor of this dragon and why is this dragon going to be different than any other dragon that the players have faced before i actually did a poll for my dragon patrons to see what kind of dragons they were kind of coming up with during all of this and artificer came up with a force dragon <laughs> How cool is that? A force dragon. What kind of things would a force dragon be? I want you to even maybe even pause this video. Think about what would you do for a force dragon? The first thing that popped into my mind was ripples of force energy that's just <laughs> shooting off the dragon constantly. Maybe it doesn't even have a breath weapon. It's just roars. Every time it roars, it's from its body emanate this knockback of force. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, if the dragon keeps pushing people away from it, why would that mechanically maybe want to make sense? Maybe it has magic missiles force damage that shoot out from its body and hit the farthest targets away from it. Boom, there you go. Right now, we, <laughs> we just homebrewed live. What this thing was is this dragon, that's the concept now. I have a force dragon that shoots out unstable force pulses from its body and has magic missiles fly out of it. That's all I need to be able to go into the next step here. So think of your concept and run with it. In fact, another thing that one of my patrons wanted to see, and maybe you guys want to see, because I didn't realize this hadn't been done yet, the Fang Dragon. A Fang Dragon is one of the more popular dragons from past editions that has not been updated to be a fifth edition version of it. And in Fizzbands, there was like an Elder Brain uh, Mind Flayer type dragon that uh, I could make some more deadly too. So if this video gets a thousand likes or more, I will take both of those dragons and make a video uh, specifically really using this system and show the behind the scenes process of using this system so then this video would be what the system is and that video would be me using it live 
on camera. Getting into step number two now is the lore and history. This is also called the dragon's affinity of how it connects in to the world around it. Right now, currently, there are chromatic dragons, metallic dragons, and gem dragons. But I, in my world, there's plenty more dragons than just those three categories, which I'll talk about here in just a second. But where does your dragon fit into it? Are you going to make a green dragon, like we said? And of course, then that would be in the chromatic family. Or if you make a purple dragon, is that in the chromatic family? Mine is, but that's a whole other thing. But what I mean about the lore and history is where does this dragon fit into the other dragon world or just the world in general? Is this nature dragon? Is there an actually a, a type of dragon that's a nature kind of dragon? And there's like a sun dragon, a fire dragon, which I guess would be red. But is it different than red? You see what I'm saying? Ask yourself these questions of where your dragon fits into the hierarchy of dragons. Are there any stereotypes where they're more evil or more good? Do they like the chromatic dragons? Do they like the metallic dragons? How do they all intertwine together? Ask yourself some of these questions. Some of them might not be interesting to you and you just think about it. Nothing comes to your head and you just move on and just keep scanning across your world and maybe, ooh, the seasons are, there's four dragons of each of the seasons and then that's where you start running with it. So instead of chromatic, metallic, and gem, you could add in season-based dragons or nature-based dragons, like I said a second ago. You could even have magic, like the schools of magic. There's a dragon for each school of magic. That'd be really cool. I'd love that idea. Uh, or the planes of existence, all the different planes. I love the planes as well. And in fact, one of the dragons in... <laughs> that the TC playbook is a chaos dragon, which is basically a limbo dragon from the plane of limbo and all that chaotic magic there. So real quick, I hope you see so far, we've done nothing mechanically for this dragon so far because we need to soak and bask in the flavor of what we're doing here with the concept and the lore and history intertwining before we can go on to the next phase, which is the dragon's age or power. How strong is this dragon or this specific species of dragon? And I don't know if you know this about dragons because I definitely did not before doing a whole bunch of research into dragons to build the system. There are five tiers of dragons, and I mean that in two different ways here. There's the age tier and a power ranking hierarchy tier. Here's what I mean. Um, for the age tier, it's very simple. You got wormling, young dragon, adult dragon, ancient dragon, great worm. Five levels of power there. That's obvious as the dragon's born and as it ages, it gets more and more powerful as it gets older and older. Super cool, super easy concept. But each of the, currently in rules as written, there are three different chromatic, metallic, and gem. Each of those have five dragon types that have a certain power based on the rules is written. So checking my notes here, and I'll get to why, what I mean by that in a second. For chromatics, you have white, black, green, blue, and red. Red are the strongest, white are the weakest. And then for metallic, you have brass, copper, bronze, silver, gold. Simple. For Where's platinum in there? I would, first of all, copper, bronze, and brass, I feel like those are all too similar. That's just a random thought I thought I just had. There should be a platinum dragon. Anyway, uh, gem, for the gem hierarchy, the weakest gem dragon is crystal, topaz, emerald, sapphire, amethyst being the strongest. Amethyst purple, that speaks to me. But in general, for the rules as written, dragons in the rules as written lore have a hierarchy of power. Myself, personally, I don't believe in this hierarchy power structure. I think a white dragon could be more powerful than a red dragon. Why is there a, why? What, what does that add to the world with a red dragon being more powerful than whites? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I think that a black dragon could be the most powerful one, and it's super scary because it's all necrotic and deadly. Like, why did there have to be some sort of baked in thing like that? So in my world, personally, in any games that I run, I have never had some sort of like, oh, a red is always more powerful than a red, like, of the same age level. You know what I'm saying? So I don't believe in the hierarchy, hier the hierarchy power struggle of that whole thing. I definitely love the age. As they get older, they get more powerful. And if a black dragon lives longer than a red dragon, it's more powerful than them. That's just my little side rant there. I wasn't planning on that rant, but there you go. You need to figure out for step three, how strong your dragon is in this hierarchy power structure. Because if we are making things for fifth edition, I always want to pay respect to the rules as written. So whenever you create your stat blocks for this, you want to think of how powerful you want this thing to be. Is this a far above power dragon so even if it's a young dragon you should be scared because these type of dragons are very powerful now before we get into step four here i want to talk about dragon sight because dragon sight was something i always thought was really cool and when i just hear the words dragon sight i thought that was fascinating and then whenever i read in fizz bands what dragon sight was my mind was blown and I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, it's something about some, they can see future iterations of themselves and different dimensions of like other versions of themselves and some sort of multiverse visions of themselves and they can see other 
past, present. I don't know. It's, it's just weird and strange to me. And I don't know how I would even run that as a dungeon master, nor would I want to. It's like running time travel. Like, no, 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 no. So for myself, dragons, and this was, I, I, I thank Fizzbands for challenging me on this and, and making me hear something that I didn't like and be like, mm -mm, I'm going to make a better version for myself, from my own perspective. Right. And I hope sometimes when I say crazy homers that you guys think are terrible, you're like, ah, that's bad. But what would you do? And hopefully then you're in a better spot because you've thought of what you would do. So anyway, my version of Dragon Sight that I've now embedded into all my dragons is when a dragon's born, it has very basic vision, just like, you know, it's a little baby, whatever. It's, it's born, it's normal vision. It gets its dark vision starts to ramp up and get super good. And then it starts to gain like true sight and gain see invisibility. Sorry before true sight it's see invisibility and they can start to see invisibility and then they can maybe start to see in other planes depending on what kind of dragon they sit maybe if it's like earth dragon they can see through the ground or something like that just came up with that that's kind of like a tremor sense type thing but the dragons start to gain higher senses as they get older and older gaining true sight once they become ancient dragons or higher or however you want to take it or however much power you want to give their vision scaling over time uh, scaling scaling anyway uh dra dragon sight though is omniscience is some sort of scrying type level of seeing where you not seeing where you not are being able to see where you are not is what i'm trying to say but you should be able to see within your realm so if you're in your lair you could see outside of your lair you could see people coming into your lair so a great worm great worms would be the only people i would give dragon sight to the the highest version highest power level of these beasts is while in their lair they can see things coming right or maybe when they leave their lair they could see in within their own lair they could scry and have vision of their horde if someone takes a magic item and leaves their horde they could track it and they could always see their horde that makes dragons sound really scary and dragon sight being omniscience of their lair, their regional domain, or their dragon item horde, that's really cool. Okay, there's my version of Dragon Sight. That's step four. All right, step four now. We're actually getting into some mechanics here to build this dragon, but we're ready for it. I don't want you to start building the dragon too early, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to build it, and you start writing out the stats for it when you have no idea what direction you're going to be going in. It's going to be a lot more clunky for you if you didn't have all the pre-game game prep beforehand. So... Building this stat block, I, in this playbook, I have five different versions of dragons. I'm going to show you the adult one. I'm going to pick the one in the middle. I have ones of these for every single thing inside the DC playbook or on the website, whatever. But uh, we're going to dive into it right here. Adult dragon, here we go. For its armor class, we talked about those five tiers of, you know, the white dragon all the way up to the red dragon. Again, I don't really follow those tiers or the rules as written for the colors of dragons, but I do like the hierarchy of there being five different levels of power within dragons, and this gives you a good sense of how strong do you want this adult dragon to be. So at the low end here, it has 18 armor class. At the high end, it has 19 armor class. For health, low end, 185. High end, 245. Saves, pick four. So you just pick any four that you want that makes sense for your dragon. Do you have a strong dragon? Do you have a fast dragon? Do you have a hardy constitution dragon? Whatever. I would usually have charisma be a thing, but anyway. Um, you pick an immunity for whatever makes the most sense for your dragon. An adult dragon gets one immunity, but lesser dragons like young and below might not get that. The armor class varies across the board. Again, I have all five iterations of this, but I want to show you middle of the road here so you can kind of make your own adjustments from there. Uh, so strength, you can give it a plus five all the way up to a plus seven. But I would say if you have a very weak dragon, Give it less modifiers. Maybe you have a uh, like a wind-based dragon that's really slung and serpentine, and it doesn't really have much musculature to it at all. Lower that strength, and if you lower the strength by three, give that three to their dexterity suite, or even just switch strength and dexterity entirely. And here's the dexterity of this is a generalized dragon. Again, think of it just a very vanilla normal dragon. Zero, zero, one, one, plus two, and just depends on how strong of a dragon you want. I hope this is just a simple little chart, but in general, when I make these, I just put what feels right for each one, and then as it gets stronger and weaker, I modify it from there. Then you got your bonus proficiencies. Uh, I give a plus five for a plus dra uh, adult dragon. It has a forty foot fly speed, eighty or sorry, forty foot run speed, eighty foot fly speed, blind sight. Right, it's starting to get its sight starting to dial up more. Or if you have a more specific dragon, maybe it give it better vision. Or if it's in the forest, it has better vision. Change around for what makes sense for your dragon. And then of course, languages are common and draconic. Also here is where I would put the basics of what its plus to hit is, how much damage it's dealing, all that kind of stuff. 
and you can use again those numbers and figure out okay so it has a uh, this strong it's strong but not that strong so it's a four strength it's an adult dragon so i'd say five but i want to make uh, let's just say five so four it has a plus nine to hit great and then it's damage i want to do d10 so we'll do one d10 plus the plus the four it has for strength or maybe i want to do more and you can add more to it or maybe and this is when we start to get into step five here in a second but you want to get your baseline for your stats armor class health damage if it has any sort of immunities this is where you start to get nothing too specific yet uh, but just the absolute basics of how strong it's going to be before you add those flavor things you thought about and speaking of flavor things we got step five the draconic features this is where you can really truly run with it and when i say run with it freaking run with it these are dragons here y'all like go crazy okay uh, and if you think of something that's very powerful and it's too powerful, make it, them only be able to use it once per day. Make them have a recharge of, of rolling a five or six for it. Put limitations on it to make it feel balanced, but don't limit the capabilities of what this dragon could do. You want to have big epic moments of the game. Let this dragon do crazy stuff so that when your players do eventually, of course, beat it or not, they feel awesome for doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rattle through these different ideas for inspiration to take these dragons elements and different aspects of them and run with it. I go into more detail in the full PDF, but I wanted to give you guys a taste of this inspiration to be able to think of different categories of your dragon. So as I'm going through these, you shouldn't do something for every single thing. I'm gonna be talking about claws, teeth, wings, breath weapon. You don't wanna have overload this dragon's kit to where every single thing, it has so many things it does that you forget what it's doing. The players think it's overpowered and not fair. As I'm scanning through this, think about if your dragon that you have in your head, I even would challenge you right now as you're watching this video, pause it right now, think of a dragon of what kind you have, a uh, lava dragon, okay. And then have that in your mind. And as I'm going through these things, if something pops out at you, boom, you'd write that down and that's what you would use. And if nothing really pops out at you for a claw attack, then don't have anything cool for its claw attack. Don't feel like you have to have something for each of these categories. That would be an overloaded bog down bog dragon. Ooh, an overloaded dragon. So here we go. First up, of course, is breath weapon. Don't have just a generic breath weapon that just does a crap load of dice damage. And that's all it does. I mean, sure, that's cool and all, but make it do something else or give it a, multiple different breath weapons. A lot of my dragons that have two different types of breath weapons that I can choose which one I want to use, right? Uh, yes, they do a bunch of damage and probably have some sort of extra little effect on it. Or maybe they just do a crap load of damage and that's what I wanted to do for it anyway. Or like I said about that random mist or fog dragon, maybe it does no damage and it just grants it invisibility during the space while it's within its breath and maybe its breath stays and lingers around and doesn't move i've had a green dragons that's poison breath started filling the room slowly and it just lingered and started to float out towards the edges and eventually the players only had a small space in the middle which there was a pool of acid or pool of poison in the middle of so it makes a much more dynamic fight when these breath weapons have different effects to them. Maybe they have lingering effects on the players. Maybe they have different recharge mechanics. I love recharge mechanics where whenever the dragon gets the half health, it resets its breath weapon. Or instead of a five or six, you have a different recharge mechanic. Or if it consumes things around it, it regains its breath weapon. Add extra cool stuff for what their breath weapon does and how they get it back or extra cool features it has. For the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna lump together bite, claw, and tail all into one. But in general, the bite is usually what I have be the most damage. Some sort of boom, it does, and only once per turn, they bite in some sort of way and there's an extra effect that happens. An extra elemental damage that they take, extra die of damage of some kind. You could all, be, of course, you could add a grapple and swallow effects if you want that to be the theme for the dragon, but a lot of dragons don't need that because they already have too many other things going on. But I will say I have had a bite swallow dragon that had a breath weapon and that was really scary. Scary. Whenever you were swallowed by it and you got breath weaponed, you just automatically failed it, and that's real scary. The tail attack is usually what I have be the longest range. It usually has reach of a plus 10 more than whatever it's everything else is. Sometimes a reach of 20 is this huge, long, sweeping tail with this cool reach effects or knockbacks that it can sweep and trip and make prone or other cool things that a flipping tail would do. And claws are usually the hardest to get creative with. So try to have some sort of, uh, maybe a, if you have a blue dragon with the lightning claw, it has some sort of crackling energy that goes between its claws. And whenever it hits one party or one party member and another party member, lightning shoots between the two of them. That's pretty cool. I just came up with that talking to you guys right now, but have some cool things that the claws can do. Maybe the claws have some sort of 
poison, like the, the a black dragon with rotting, eroding claws that are infected with disease. And that's super gross. And if you get slit by it, that gets into you. And now you're, you're, you're poisoned or you have some sort of necrotic damage that happens every turn. Next up is wings of the dragon. Have the wings be something more than just they can fly. Maybe this dragon's so big it can't even fly and its wings have like eroded into these like weapons, uh, almost like a tail attack. And they have some reach type puncture or impaling that they can do with the wings or make them d double down on the flying things. And maybe they can flap towards people and knock them back really far distances. Or they could take their wings and shield their own bodies as, <laughs> as some sort of armor. And speaking of bodies, that brings me to body and scales. Think of how the body of this thing or even the scales of this creature can be be different in different ways or maybe when you deal damage to it there's some sort of kickback so a, a red dragon that has gaps between its scales and it has like these heavy plates with gaps between them that fire like shoots out every time it takes damage maybe it reacts differently to different types of elemental damage or different schools of magic even I, I mentioned schools of magic in the earlier concept phase maybe if someone casts a certain school of magic around this dragon they react in a certain way or cancel it entirely maybe the dragon has the rune scales like fizzbands talked about where there's certain runes on its scales and different parts of its body that give it access to different magical abilities and the players could target those zones of those specific scales and once they deal enough damage to that scale it loses that and it can't gain access to that ability anymore which kind of brings me to a side tangent that i also talked about in the pdf and some other things i have coming up that we'll talk about at the end is damaging zones have different parts of the dragon that you can target and deal damage to in different ways. Like you can attack its wings and it can lose the ability to fly. You can attack certain parts of its body and maybe it has a multi-attack three and after you've dealt half its hit points and damage, it only has two attacks now. So you can make your dragon more powerful at the beginning and then over time as it loses its health, you can have it lose certain facets depending on where they're attacking and you can have the players declare this attack of I'm gonna attack its arm, I'm gonna attack its tail, I'm gonna attack its whatever. And you can keep track of the, its overall health, yes, of course, or the damage dealt to each body part. And then, of course, once they deal a certain total amount of damage, they would kill the dragon, but each body part could have its own thing. I've had this happen all the time on the fly before, where I create uh, some sort of dragon or shoot any kind of monster, and whenever players are like, oh, there's some sort of breath weapon, and they were like, I'm going to attack its throat, and they could attack at disadvantage for some sort of whatever, and however you want to run that as a dungeon master, that's a whole other video concept there, but you can attack its throat, and over time, it would not be able to use its breath weapon anymore. I remember that happening one time where I rolled and it recharged its breath and I described its glow inside of its neck and all the players focused on it, dealt enough damage to it, and it lost its breath weapon. Don't be afraid to let your players engage with the dragon or whatever monster in a bunch of unique ways. But getting back to dragon specifically, spell casting. I love spell casting dragons. Dragons have magic coursing through them. They are whatever your version and whatever your lore is for dragons in your world, but they are heavily based in magic. So dragons, all of my dragons in general can just cast spells. Now, most of the time it's usually reflavored through other things of just the dragon touching the ground, like a green dragon manipulating nature just by touching it or thinking it or something like that. And it's usually not these dragons making hand gestures or something weird. But I would also say you can take any spell in Dungeons and Dragons and reflavor it into a dragon breath weapon. And I would challenge you to do this. Go find a spell and turn it into a breath weapon. So Firestorm, this pillars of damage coming from the sky, right, in these different locations. What if that's a dragon breath? That would be an easy one to switch up. And you just had like a turret machine gun dragon breath where it's just like <laughs> spitting dragon fire into these different parts. That'd be crazy, right? But it is a, what, seventh level spell? And that totally seems fair. And you're just reflavoring it as a really cool version of a breath. What other spells could you think of? I'm going to do one right now. <laughs> Besides fi fireball just popped in my head and that's just a little too obvious. I'm picking a random spell right now and making it into a breath weapon. Scroll, scroll, scroll 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 let's see i'm probably around fifth level spells stop okay i'm at seventh level spells apparently and i'm between plane shift and power word pain both of which could totally be dragon's breath plane shift let's say you make one of those planar dragons i was talking about i have a chaos dragon what about a planar dragon that you for whatever plane that you pick that it comes from its breath weapon banishes you to that plane of existence that's crazy or power word pain it is actually a breath weapon that inflicts power word pain and this crippling pain that affects the players inside of it instead of dealing massive damage that worked out really well and that's what i'm talking about any sort of spell you can think of 
a dragon breath weapon version. And then the other concepts that take and run with dragons, this would technically be step six, uh, but this is really, really just running with it. Once you have this dragon that you're excited and you got some mechanics for it to be able to take and run with, thinking outside the box with what this dragon's capable of and what kind of things can affect it. What type of minions does it affect? These cool things that the dragon can do, maybe it can affect the minions around it. One of the cool ideas that I'll talk to you in just a second is a blue lightning dragon that supercharges electricity into the creatures around it. So you have boars and other creatures that are supercharged and have like lightning crackling through their bodies because they become affected by the dragon's presence around them. That gets into the regional effects of these dragons. How does it affect the world? Because it shouldn't just be about this one one dragon how does this dragon affect the world around it the civilizations around it the people that would maybe worship it the creatures that it feeds off of all of that kind of stuff because a, a lot of these dragon fights aren't just the fight of the dragon it's the build-up to the dragon fight the journey to get to the dragon the things that the dragon's doing that you're having to go chase after it for which also brings me to chasing it into its layer and having some sort of layer things of all these things that you went and ran with in this vision you have of the dragon maybe there's lightning crystals inside of the dragon's layer that shoot those lightning tethers that we talked about a second ago for that blue dragon and there's these things that light up in the dragon. I had one fight that I did where I had six different things here, here, and here, and they would shoot lightning between each other and the players had to kind of keep moving around this lightning dragon's lair. Or you can think about what's inside its lair, like another friend of the channel, the Cleric Corner. He is another YouTuber, is a friend of the channel, friend of mine. Uh, the Cleric Corner is about a thousand subscriber dude. He's on his on the come up. I remember those days. So uh, check him out if you want to send him some love from the dungeon crew. Uh, tell him I said, hey, what's up? Uh, he had a video on dragons that he released a lot of really cool ideas about and me and him have talked back and forth a bunch of different times about how to take dragons to the next level a lot of the excitement i had from fizz bands and a lot of the excitement i had when creating this resource i was talking to him too he had a dragon video got me excited i love dragons so much and it was really cool to see the cleric corner and his certain takes on dragons he had a lot of really cool ideas about the blue dragon stuff with some lightning things and leading up to it he tells a story about his players going after this blue dragon and making it absolutely epic super cool stuff he's really outside the box thinkers to so go check them out and hopefully after watching this video and some other things you can take your dragons outside the box and really start challenging your players with them and having these memorable me some of the there's a dragon in the middle of my campaign and it might be more memorable than the whole part of the campaign just because dragons should be so epic and iconic i had created another campaign and i was like i need to put dragons in here in some way so i i am obsessed with dragons and hopefully you can see the, how much i love it and if you're obsessed with dragons too check out the dc playbook volume five of dragons the build a dragon system that i go through all here it goes full on step-by-step -step detail it goes even farther than this video did and all the rest of the stuff that i already said is in it including those subclasses guys i'm so happy with this pdf i love diving into dragons i dove into this pdf hardcore myself my team joined right now along in with me it was really cool to see a lot of stuff they created one of my best friends created one of those classes here that we've all taken and kind of pull all our heads together to make the absolute best dragon subclasses and magic items bonus perks monsters and the system all in one so i hope you enjoy it hope you get a lot out of it hope you love dragons like i do and i hope you think stinking and i hope you keep thinking not stinking outside the box peace